What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we are talking camera lenses. Lenses are always the talk of everything, right? Which lens is best? Which lens do you use? Which lens did you use for that shot? What lens should I buy? Should I buy this lens or that lens? We talk lenses all the time. And why not? Who Everyone loves lenses, right? Everyone who likes photography loves to talk about a lens. Now the trouble is with lenses is that they can be quite expensive. So for example, to shoot a typical sports event, what would you need? Well, first First of all, you probably need some kind of long lens, maybe something like a 300mm, 300mm f2.8 lens, great. You need something else to pair that with, so maybe like a 70 to 200 f2.8 lens, perfect. Then you need something to cover your slightly wider angle work, so maybe like a 24 to 70 f2.8. And pretty much that'd do it, right? That's like the holy trinity, that's the trio. You could catch pretty much every sports photo you want to with that. Maybe you might want to add a wide angle, so let's throw a 16-35 f2.8 into there as well. Perfect. We're all set, right? Good to go. Pop out, buy those lenses, go shoot your sports, and you will be absolutely fine. But but we have one problem and that one problem is that if you want to go buy the lenses or at least the best models currently of all of those lenses I just mentioned it is going to cost you in the region of 12 to 15 depending on where you buy them from thousand pounds I'll say that to you again 12 to 15 thousand pounds that is just under 20 thousand US dollars I mean that is insane money so what do you do if like me you can't afford to go and buy all those lenses you're going to look at the cheap alternatives and I thought today I would talk about what I think are the best cheap alternatives that you can look at for those key few lenses that you need to go and capture your event. I should say this is going to be entirely opinion based right this is just my opinion lots of people will have different opinions what I will say is that I have used every lens I'm going to talk about in this video I have personally used it and I'll be sharing my experience with you and on that note I'm really interested to hear your opinions if you've got a lens that you think is great or a lens that you've used that is a great cheaper alternative then let us know about it right hit it in there in the comments really useful for everybody really really appreciated i'm sure everyone is going to be able to love looking through those comments and see recommendations from people in our community because that is so so handy maybe you do me a little favor whilst you're there hit that like button because it's right there right where you're putting your comment the like button is just just there hit that like button because it helps me out loads and i really really appreciate it why don't you think about subscribing whilst you're there hit that subscribe button loads of other videos to come on my channel which i'm sure you will enjoy so look let's get straight into this right and let's start talking about the big big lens so a big lens that a lot of people will look at is the 300mm f2.8. I can hear you guys in the comments saying, hey, what about the 400 2.8? Yep, absolutely right. But I use a 300 and I want to talk about lenses I've used. So we're going to talk about the 300 for today. So you could pop out and buy yourself the brand new Mark III Canon 300mm f2.8 ISL lens. Absolutely amazing lens. Unbelievably good. Pin sharp, crazy quick focus, really, really really good one little problem it will cost you about six and a half thousand pounds that one lens over six grand that is crazy crazy money now I don't use that lens I actually use a cheaper model of that same lens but even that's still going to cost you in the region of 2000 right and that's a lot of money and that is not going to be the best cheaper alternative for somebody who's looking to shoot a little bit cheaper now of course there are cheaper 300 mil lenses you could look at you could look at some of the zoom lenses I think Canon make like a 70 to 300, uh, Sigma make a 300 um, f4 lens. The problem is with those lenses is they are f4. So with all my recommendations today, I'm going to be talking about lenses that achieve the same basic tick off points as these more expensive lenses. So for example, that 300mm lens is an f2.8. So my cheaper alternative is going to be an f2.8. I think if I recommend you an f4 lens, yeah, it will be cheaper, but it is not capable of doing the same job as the f2.8 lens. So in my mind, that isn't really a good enough alternative because it won't do the job that you need it to do. That's why some of these lenses aren't necessarily the cheapest 300mm lens you could buy, for example, but it is the lens that I think is the best alternative while still ticking off those few key points that are the same 
such as the f-stop or aperture so for the 300 mil my recommendation is going to be it's an old sigma lens the sigma 120 to 300 mil f 2.8 lens if you're willing to buy used you could go out and find that lens on ebay right now and pick up one of those for less than 500 pounds you could get one of those for about 400 something if you're lucky so why am i recommending that lens well first of all it is an f 2.8 it is a great way and one of the cheapest ways to get yourself an f 2.8 300 mil lens i used that lens for a couple of years yeah with my sports photos mostly shooting football and i found it to be great the focus is decent sharp images the picture quality is good it combined really well uh, with my 7d mark ii that i was using with it at the time and i found it to be a great lens for the money sigma do a, a newer version a more expensive version is the 120 to 300 um, os sport lens but again the trouble is then is that's going to cost you more money so it's not the cheaper alternative not as cheap as this older sigma 120 to 300 mil lens that i'm talking about this will be a good time for me to jump in and say I've linked all these lenses where I can so you can go look at them on Amazon if you can't find them on Amazon so for example some of them are older and you might not be able to buy them on Amazon well you know what don't worry go search on eBay I'm putting all of the lens names on the screen search that on eBay you'll be able to find used copies of them and used is going to be the best way to get the best possible price make sure you're careful buying used of course I've done a whole video on that somewhere else go look at that one in fact to tell you what I'll link that at the end stick around I'll link that video at the end of this one where I talk about how to buy used gear um, safely but that would be my best recommendation for the 300 lens the Sigma 120 to 300 f 2.8 lens so let's move on to the next one what about a 70 to 200 so right now I'm using the Canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 IS lens now you can go out and buy the mark 3 version of that lens right now but the problem is it's going to cost you nearly two and a half thousand pounds two and a half thousand pounds so what's going to be my recommendation what What's the best cheap alternative well i think the best cheap alternative is the canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens and how does that make any sense it's the same lens no it's not i'm talking about the older version canon have made loads of 70 to 200 f 2.8 lenses you can buy the very original l lens the non-is one you can buy the is mark 1 is mark 2 is mark 3 there's loads of different lens in those series and actually pretty much all of them are really really good is the mark one as quick and as sharp and so on and so on as the mark three no look honestly it's 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 not gonna be but actually unless you're really getting in there and you're pixel peeping and you're being really fussy about it the mark one is going to be absolutely good enough especially if you're somebody who's working with a budget if you get yourself on ebay you could go buy yourself a used canon 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens for about 400 pounds 400 pounds right compared to two and a half grand to go get the mark 3 it's really worth considering go look it up on ebay see what you think of it there's loads of talk about these lenses on forums get yourself out there have a look you'll see what people think of them they are really really good lenses and so worth it for the money so let's move down from there let's get even wider again what are we going to say is the best choice for a 24 to 70 so right now I use the Canon 24 to 70, uh, the L lens, the f 2.8, and it's actually the Mark II version that I use. Now the problem with that lens again, you go out and buy that brand new right now, it's going to cost you about two thousand pounds. Crazy money to get hold of that lens. So what can we do for a cheaper alternative? So for this one, I'm actually going to go third party again, and I'm going to recommend the Tamron. Tamron make a 24 to 70 f 2.8 I think it's called like the VC DI something lens whatever it's called I'm putting the proper name of it on the screen right here so don't worry about that now this is actually a really good lens now I haven't owned one of these but I have borrowed one and I used it to shoot a whole basketball game so I had some really good experience with it and I found it to be great I got some fantastic basketball pictures using that lens my experience when you're out wider at like 24 mil 35 
five mil, something like that. It was really sharp, it was really good. And I would imagine, unless again, you're really pixel peeping, you probably would struggle to tell the difference between that and images shot at 24 mil on, on my Canon 24 to 70. When you got a little bit further into the focal range, out to like the 70 mil, it was slightly softer in my opinion, but, but not soft, right? Make sure you, you're careful with what I'm saying. Not soft images, slightly softer. I'm talking about if you get an image shot at 70 mil with that lens and another one shot at 70 mil with my Canon 24 to 70 f 2.8 Mark II, you probably would notice a little bit of a difference in sharpness, but not massive. And certainly when you're considering the difference in price, right? Now the Tamron, you can probably go buy one of those for somewhere in the region of just under 500 pounds, okay? And it's still quite expensive. 500 pounds is not cheap, but it is a lot, lot cheaper than 2,000 pounds. And the difference is nowhere near a quarter of the quality in terms of your image quality. Really, really worth considering. Really fantastic lens for the money. Go check that one out. So from there, we get onto the wider lens. So you could go buy yourself a Canon 16 to 35 mil f 2.8 lens. There is a Mark III version of that available now, and it will cost you nearly two and a half thousand pounds. So what can you buy for a cheaper alternative? Well, you know what, for this one, I'm actually going to give you two because number one is the lens that I'm using to record this video right now. This is quite an old lens, but I think it's fantastic and I use it all the time. And this is the Canon 17 to 40 f4 lens. Now I know you guys are jumping on me straight away, but Rob, it's f4. You said it had to do the same stuff. Yeah, I did. But for me, it can do the same job, right? Now, when you're using your wider lens for shooting sports events, your wider lens, you're gonna be using it for things like stadium shots, arena shots, crowds, fans, real wide action shots maybe, like a behind the goal remote perhaps, or something under the basket down low and really wide open. Now for pretty much every situation that I have just described, you're probably going to want a slightly wider depth of field anyway. And that's fine, you can get away with that because your shutter speed is way, way lower. For a stadium wide angle shot, I'll shoot that at like F7, F9 maybe. My shutter speed's way down low because you don't need to freeze action like you do with your match action shots. Same with fan photos. My behind the goal remotes are at like at least F5.6 normally, sometimes F7.1, something like that. So an F4 lens is absolutely perfect. You don't need that F2.8. Now for this, I'm gonna give you another even cheaper version. You can buy a Canon 10 to 22 mil lens, right? Canon 10 to 22, and I think it's f4.5 um, to f5.6. Now that is a really good lens, and the best thing about this lens is you can pick one of those up used for less than 200 pounds. 200 pounds gets you a really good wide angle lens. You guys look back on my channel, pretty much every video over the course of the last year, up until about three months ago, all of them were filmed on that lens. Go check out my Instagram page, Check out at Rob Sambles Sport or at Rob Sambles. Pretty much all of those landscape photos, all of my wider angle sports photos that you can see over there were shot using that Canon 10 to 22 mil lens. I really, really enjoyed it. I upgraded just recently to the Canon 17 to 40 that I'm filming on right now, mainly because I had an opportunity to pick up one of those for a really, really good price. If that hadn't happened, I would have stuck with that Canon 22 because I really, really loved it. Fantastic lens, really, really really worth considering getting one of those if you're looking for a cheaper wide angle lens. Just be aware that, that is an EFS lens. So that is actually a crop sensor lens, right? Most of you guys out there, loads of people watching my video are going to be shooting crop sensors anyway, because a lot of people do when they first start getting into DSLRs. So don't be too worried about that. Don't be panicking too much about, oh, but what if I want to upgrade to full frame down the line? You know what? If you do, you'll have a chance to change your lens then. Don't, don't worry too much about that for now. So that pretty much rounds us off. Now, I know some of you guys are going to be thinking, yeah, Rob, great, but those aren't cheap lenses. They're still 500 pounds, some of the ones you've talked about. Yes, they are, right? But the important thing is you want to get a balance between something cheaper and something that's going to do the job. I've tried to share with you guys today lenses that I think are capable of doing the job. Are they as good as those top-end expensive models that we talked about. Look, let's be honest, no, of, of course they're not 
as good, but they shouldn't be, right? There's no way a 500 pound lens should be as good as a lens that costs two and a half thousand pounds. If it was as good, then that lens that costs two and a half grand would be an absolute outrage for it to be that much money. Some of those lenses are expensive for a reason. So the thing to consider here, right, is yes, 500 pounds is still expensive, but it's an investment and you will use that lens for a while. You probably use it for a good few, two, three, maybe even longer years time, right? And yes, as you go, you'll gradually upgrade your gear. That's exactly what I've done. I've gradually upgraded one lens at a time. But even if you were to go out there right now and buy every lens I've talked about in this video today, we know what all in those lenses would cost you something like 2000 pounds all in together. You couldn't even buy one of those top end lenses for 2000 pounds, not even one. And if you want to buy that 300 mil F 2.8 Mark three, you're talking about six and a half grand. So you know what all in 2000 to buy all those lenses versus 15,000, 15,000 to buy all of those lenses. That's a big, big difference and something you should really consider if you are looking for cheaper alternatives for your lenses. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, I ask you to do one thing for me. Hit that thumbs up button, hit the like button on the video because it helps me out loads and loads. Think about subscribing whilst you're there. Loads of other videos to come on my channel. In the meantime, guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next video.